Let's speak to Dr Duncan Robertson, who's a lecturer in Management Sciences and Analytics at Loughborough University, who focuses on analysing policies related to the pandemic. What are you reading into those figures, Duncan? Good evening. Evening. Well, um, it's it's very positive having no deaths recorded, and of course, um, you know, with bank holidays, the the sort of data takes a bit of uh, time to get through. So we're running at about six deaths per day at the moment. So even though de no deaths are recorded, you know, it could be, and it's probably likely that actually, you know, there were some deaths actually today. So um, you know, all these things are very positive. Um, but of course, you know, we, we're back to this sort of stage where, you know, cases go up, but hospitalizations don't go up so much and deaths are very low. And then we, you know, sort of get into this this routine that we've got into, you know, uh, in the first, just before the first lockdown, second and third, that, you know, you can't really see the problem coming until it kind of really appears. Now, it's it, hopefully we're not going to go into that stage, but we still don't really know. We don't really have enough data because there's this battle between the virus, the variants and the vaccine, uh, which really means it's very difficult to uh, project and to say what happens next. So really, we're saying there's a wide range of things that could happen and we're waiting for more data. You sound like a lawyer. It's, <laughs> it's just, I know it's very difficult to give a definitive answer and I know, you know, people have to be cagey because if you say one thing and it goes wrong, you know, you're the one that everyone's going to point the finger at and worse, but there really isn't any evidence to suggest this third wave is on the way in terms of a, a deathly fatal hospitalising wave, is there? Well, I suppose, you know, whether it's a third wave or a fourth wave really depends where you are in the country. And, um, you know, the data really, all, all that we can really see is the number of people who get infected from any particular case. And, sure. and there are some, some numbers there from Public Health England which are saying, really, it's significantly higher, what's called the secondary attack rate, significantly higher than the Kent variant. And that's causing some concern. And I think that, you know, we know that it's more transmissible. But the real thing is how much more transmissible this Delta variant, as it's now called, <laughs> the uh, uh, India variant, the B1617.2, how much more transmissible that is, really has such a big effect on what is likely to happen next okay. that it's very difficult to project and, to, and to, to see what's going to happen. So that's why we do really have to be fairly cautious about, you know, going ahead with unlocking or, you know, making any more sort of, um, you know, release uh, of, of restrictions until we really know what is going on. And we I, need another couple of weeks. Of course. And, I, and I'm sure most people would agree. We don't exactly know how much more transmissible, but this is a much more easily infectious variant. However, is it more dangerous? That, that's the key question, isn't it? And is there any well, evidence to suggest it is more dangerous than so, alpha, yeah, beta, no, delta, zeta, uh, yeah. pi? <laughs> There's no sort of direct uh, evidence to show that it's more dangerous um, if you get infected. But of course, if 10 times more people get infected, then it's 10 times more dangerous that way. Um, and the, 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 the problem is, uh, is really, you know, it's not going to affect the country equally. And of course, you have places which have very high uptake of, of vaccines and you have areas which have relatively low uptake of, of vaccines so you know inner cities ethnic mi minority areas deprived areas all of these things sort of add up to to say that actually people are at more risk in in some areas like blackburn with darwin uh and like bolton for example and so really it's not as though there's this one thing going on across the country at the moment uh, it may well happen because of course you know we've all been mixing over the bank holiday and uh, you know doing things that we wouldn't have done to, you know it's only two weeks of course since mm. we went into that step three and it's kind of difficult to remember that far back because it's almost a different world and so you know it does take time so hospitalizations that are happening now are really only potentially as a as a effect of that uh, step three so we're not really seeing that come through because it takes a couple of weeks really uh, to, to end up in hospital on average you know uh, from the time you're infected. So we're only starting to see the effects of step three happening now. 